Do you want to get your life under control? Well, in today's video, we're going to learn how to create a dynamic calendar that will help you do just that. We're going to follow this step-by-step -step tutorial and you will be able to track and plan everything that you do day by day. Let's jump into it. Now let's start with creating our format. Let's add our year here. Let's type in 2024 and let's type in December. So that are just two fields that we have here. Now what I have done is added a year and a month list, which we're going to use as a data validation from a different field. And we also have a tab for a holiday list, which we're going to come back to later. Now what I've done is added the year 2000, all the way up to 2040 but you can continue adding as many years as you want and just remember that you can go back and change these years so the data validation won't actually change well hopefully we're not going to get any more new months ever in our lifetime but if we have happened to see that then we definitely can change this here as well right let's go here let's go and create a data validation so let's click into the data validation and we're going to click into a list, take our source, go here, and we simply just take our highlighted data so that we have the numbers of years right here. Press OK. Now we have a drop down where we can simply select any other year that we want. Same goes for the calendar for the months of the year. Let's go to data validation, go to lists, and we can simply go to our month list here select our months and press OK. Now here we have two things, the, the year and the month. Now let's do that, center it, let's make this a little bit bigger, let's change the font to a 14, let's bold it up. Now we're going to change this in a second and what we're going to do here is let's add week number and we're going to add our days of the week. Now you can start it with a Sunday or a Monday, depending on when you want to start your date or day of the week. So we're gonna start ours with a Monday. We're gonna drag it to a Sunday. Now, obviously let's just highlight all of this, double click it, make it a little bit smaller. And because the December's there, we're just gonna take this and make it a tiny bit, adjust that. Now we can just center this up a little bit. And with the December, all we do is highlight that and we're just going to merge and center it right here. So we have that. Now here comes the drop down, and it's still valid. So let's just change a little bit of the formatting here. Now we can change it to whatever color you want. Let's go for a darker green and we'll go for a lighter green right here. Same goes with the dates here. The headers here, just control B. Now center this up. What we can do is we can go and take a darker green for that. We can do a lighter green over here just for the days off the week. And we have our weekends on Saturday and Sunday. Now, usually you would have, let's say, one, two, three, four, five. We well, usually five weeks, but it spills over to the end of one weekend, maybe even to the last week. So we're just going to have six columns here. Now, what we're going to do is that's just a placeholder right now. What we're going to do is we are going to do something called a sequence function. And what that's going to do is populate some level of numbers for us. Now, in the sequence function, it asks you for the number of rows and the number of columns that you want. So we want six rows and we want seven columns along. Now, when we close that, we are going to get a series of numbers right here. So we get one, two, seven, and all the way down. Now, this is going to come into handy in a short while when we look at the dates. Now, let's just continue to format. Let's select these, and we can highlight them. We can do Control B. Now, we can do the same for everything else as well. So if you wanna make this a little bit lighter, you can. Now, we can do the same here. And what you can do is you can have a border, but now you have a light border here. You can change the color of the border. You can change it into white, for example. So let's go down and go to line color. Let's go to white. And now if we click the border, you'll see that we have white between our borders. I like that border as well. Now here we've got a placeholder. So all we're gonna do is change that as soon as we have some date in here. Now, what do we want? We want to see current date. 
Now, what we're going to do is add two fields. One is going to be called the date value and the other one is going to call the first day of the actual month. Now, we're going to add a date value here. Our date value is going to be combined by the first date of that particular month that we've added here and that year. So to get that, we simply type in a date value right here and we type the date as a text. So we want to add one. Now you can add these in quotation marks, but no need because this is actually a number. And we're gonna combine this with our month and we are going to combine this with our year. Now let's close that up and see what happens. We get a number right here. Now I'm just gonna change this to an actual date so you can have a look and see, I'm gonna open that. You'll have 1st of December, 2024. That's what's going to happen right here. Now I'm gonna change this back to a number and you'll see that we have 45627. So control Z just to see that. Now we're gonna go back to that number when we're gonna do our series here so you can understand what's happening. Our first day is established by adding the weekday formula. So all we need to do is type in the weekday and we're gonna click into that. So that's our original date. And what do we want to do? We want to have a look at our date between Monday and Sunday, because that is what we're doing over here. Now, if you want to do this from Sunday to Saturday, then you simply choose Sunday to Saturday right here, as we have Monday to Sunday, that's what we're gonna choose. So we're gonna choose number three here. We're gonna close this up and you will see that the first day of the month or first of December should be the sixth day. Now, let's see if this is correct. Let's simply get our data up here. Now, the logic starts from zero here. So we have Monday as zero and we have Sunday as six. And the first day here is showing as a sixth. And in our calendar here, the 1st of December is indeed a six. So we know that we're on the right track. Now we need to take these two formulas, the date value, as well as the weekday formula, and add it to our sequence here so that we get the correct dates. So how we're going to do this is either we're gonna copy the formula and take it over, or we're going to name these into certain cell names. Now, if we name this in certain cell names, all we can call this is, let's call it a C date, which is a calendar date. You can call it whatever you like, as long as it's not any of the names that are already built into Excel. And we can call this day underscore one. So we have day one and C date. Now, let's go here and save that, day underscore one. Okay, now we have day one here and we have C date here. Now we need to remember these two when we're building it into our formula, although we'll be able to have a look when we are typing in our formula. Just to help understand a bit the logic, I'm gonna change this back to a number. I'm gonna go back here, just change it into a number. So we will see what happens here. So don't need these. Now what I'll do here is convert this as well into a number format rather than a general. And of course, because we haven't set this as a number right here, all it's going to give you is the numbers because we've added the sequence here. Now, the sequence automatically will start by one. However, we want the start step. So the start step is going to be our date here. Now let's close that and see what happens. As you see, sort of taking the cell reference, it takes a C date. Okay, let's press that. Now, as you see here, we have 45627 and 45627, which represents the 1st of December. But it's not on a Monday, it needs to be on a Sunday. Therefore, we need to use our formula here to determine the actual first day of that month, which is now we've named this cell as day one. So we're going to go here, and all we're going to do is we're going to take away our first day. Now let's see what happens. Okay, now we have 45627 and you can see 45627 here on a Sunday and over here and that's exactly what we want. Now if we just take this and go to control one, we're going to change this back to date format. Okay, now we can choose our date, we can choose it just as a number, we can just go into a custom and all we're going to do is day date. Okay, so that's all we need. And there you go.
So the first of the month is starting on a Sunday just as we want it and these two fields, call them the helper fields, are super important. Now these definitely change, let's change this as well. Okay, oh, now we need to go here, control one. I'm gonna change this to a long date so that we can see. This is the 1st of December. Now let's see if this works for January. So January 2025, first is on a Wednesday. Now we're gonna change this first to 2025 and then we're going to change our month to January. And you see clearly here that the day has been updated. So these two formulas are super important and this is what we're going to use for our logic in our calendars. Now we're going to do some conditional formatting to hide and reveal some of the things that we want to see or we don't want to see. Let's just get rid of that right here. Now, what do we want to do? We have a number of dates here. We don't want to see the dates that are there before the first of the month or we don't want to see any of the dates that are after January. All we need to do is highlight it, go to conditional formatting. We're going to go to new rule. The new rule is now going to be based on a formula. Now, the formula is equals month. So the month of, that is in the first here. Now, we're not going to lock the cell we wanted to move along. So we'll just clear the dollar signs right here. C5. We don't want this month to equal the month that is in our date. Okay, so our C date, we're gonna type that in. Now here is a little bit tricky. If you have named your cell over here, then you do need to remember the name, or if you see the formula here, then it's much easier to remember. Now, if this month does not equal that, then we're going to format this. We can change this to whatever format you want. You can also remove it, you can just highlight it, you can bold it, fill it as you want. All we're going to do is highlight it in a very light colour, not the fill, we've got only the font. Let's go here and let's just do it in a very light colour. Press OK. So we want to change the actual background and let's make sure that we have the border, the fill as no colour or automatic is better. OK, press OK. Now OK. There we go. Now you can see that everything that's not in that month is completely shaded. Let's see if this works for another month. Let's change this to May, see what happens. And you can see that it dynamically updates as and when you change your date. Our second conditional formatting is going to highlight today's date. So let's select our data once again. Conditional formatting, a new rule. Once again, a formula to determine equals now we can click into our cell or we can simply type in c5 now let's just take away the dollar signs here is equals c5 equals to today then all we want to do is change the format so we change it to bold and let's change the fill color to an orange press ok there you go and today is indeed 28th of december Therefore, this date is highlighted. Now let's check if this works, change it to another date, and it doesn't appear. The final conditional formatting that we want to apply is where we have our holiday list over here. Just added the date just for simplicity. Just remember that each date is actually stored as a number. So when we go to number, you can see four, five, six, five, eight. Now let's go back, control Z. Let's go back to our calendar. Let's just move this, so I'll take all of these and I'm just gonna move them a little bit further up. Now, don't worry if you drag it up, you will still have your cell names relevant, so that's fine. Now we have 30, one, two, three, four. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here. We're gonna have a lookup function. We can use a VLOOKUP, you can use a lookup, you can use anything that you want. Now we're gonna select this. Now we're going to our table array. Now we don't need to look up actually anything, so we just simply take our list here. We can lock up the column here, otherwise it will move. Now what we wanna do is we just wanna see the first column and we want an exact match. Now when we close this up, see what happens, it gives us an NA function. So it's telling us the 30th of December, remember this is the month before, is not recognized in our list. Now let's drag this along neither is the 31st. 
However, the first is recognised as a number. Now, if you drag them along, you'll see that nothing else is there. If we change the data, we recognise. So what we need to do is add a simple function before this called, is this a number or is this not? Now, if it's a number, it's going to return us a true. And if it's not, it's going to return us a false. And that's the logic that we want to use to build our conditional format. So there you go, that says false. And if you go along here, that says true. So that's the exact formula that we need. Now we're going to take this formula. Let's copy that, control C. All we do is highlight our selected cells here. Once again, conditional formatting, new rule. Then we go to formula. Now simply just drop this in here. And how we're going to format is, is let's make it into an orange color and let's make it bold. And we'll just make it italicized and bold. Press OK. Press OK. Now you see that you have the 1st of January as well as the 20th of January highlighted. Let's go back here and we can see that. Now 17th of February is on our list. So let's change our calendar to Feb and see what happens right here. Change that. And there we go, the 17 does. So you can truly see that this is really a dynamic formula and you can experiment with any version that you want to do as well. I've given you some other options over here as well, calendar two and calendar three. So with all of these, you can simply just change the date over here and it will be changed directly into the other calendars. Thank you for watching this video today. I hope that you've learned something and I hope that you enjoy content like this. So please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.